This is Twit. The other ransomware news of note, despite ongoing attacks here and there that, you know, aren't, they don't really rise to the level of cataclysmic, was the news that New Zealand's based Emsis Soft, whom we've referred to recently, they're very involved in ransomware. I mean, they're security researchers. They're good guys. They've created their own independent ransomware decryption tool, which when it's provided with the master key from the attackers, you know, no doubt by way of the victim, the, you know, the victim pays the ransom, the attackers give the victim the, the decryption key, then should you choose to do so as a victim, you don't have to use the attacker's possibly sketchy decryptor. You can use Emsis Soft's independent ransomware decryption tool, which is reputed to be safe and reliable and much faster. It, it turns out that the decryptors are not very fast. Emsis tool is aware of the encryption employed by 50, five, zero different breeds of ransomware. And it has the added benefit of not having been written by the same people who just finished attacking you, you know, if you're the victim in the first place. Instead, it was written by a reputable security firm. This means that it's not necessary to take the added time as a victim uh, to have this attacker-provided decryptor reverse-engineered, analyzed, and validated to verify that it won't make an already bad situation worse. And it turns out that that's something that responsible victims are having to do. They get the decryptor, and then they find some security firm, and they say, uh, is this safe for us to run? You know, we'd like to get our data back, but we're not, you know, we just got this from the bad guys. So, you know, and, and we just paid them. So, you know, what do we do? So what's happening is that growing experience with attacker-provided decryptors shows, first of all, they are not all that reliable. Some inadvertently mangle larger files. They just don't deal with really huge files correctly. And almost universally, they decrypt far less quickly than they encrypt. Now, I have no explanation for that since the bulk data encryption that they would be doing would be by a symmetric cipher. And a symmetric cipher should be symmetric not only in its keying, but in its performance. Uh, we do know that the bad guys will be motivated to get as much encryption done as quickly as possible since any discovery of their own like their ongoing uh, encrypting operation, of course, would result in plugs being pulled out of walls uh, as quickly as possible in order to shut down the encryption of whatever, you know, they're, it, it's discovered that they're doing. So it certainly behooves the attackers to optimize their encryption speed wherever possible. But as for decryption, it's easy to imagine that there's no big rush there. They will have obtained their ransom payment. They will have provided a functioning unlock master key and some piece of software which you can apply the key to, which will decrypt your files. So they probably feel they've met their obligation. But their victim will still be offline and out of business until presumably all or most of their, certainly the most important machines, have been decrypted, which all reports indicate can take quite some time. But in both cases, of the two high-profile attacks we've recently discussed, the first one, of course, against Colonial Pipeline, and the second against HSE, remember that's Ireland's National Public Healthcare System, their respective decryptors, the first for the dark side ransomware and the second for the Conti ransomware, which we talked about last week, were, to were too slow to be of use. Colonial Pipeline, after paying 
$4.4 million in ransom wound up restoring the bulk of their files from their own backups. Uh, It wasn't clear whether they might have selectively decrypted some individual files that had been critically changed since those backups were made. So that, you know, an intelligent strategy might have been to, like, like restore everything that from our own backups because that we could trust completely and then where necessary selectively decrypt files that were newer than those backups which also had critical data and then make sure that that those are you know properly decrypted so maybe it was a hybrid strategy uh we do know that hse that ireland's national health uh healthcare system used MSYSOFT's decryptor, which ran at twice the speed of the decryptor provided by the the Conti gang um, and was much more trustworthy. So what I think we're going to begin to see is yet another component being added to this ecosystem with faster and far more trustworthy file decryptors being sourced by trusted and well-known security firms. For properly designed encryption, the master decryption key will still be required. In other words, having that decryptor won't help you without the key. But it certainly makes sense for the ransomware attackers maybe to even publish their file encryption formats, which, thanks to the miracle of public key crypto, in no way weakens the encryption, right? You know, all of that can be published, and without the key, it does you no good. But doing so would serve to, you know, further mollify the victims and provide additional assurance of reliable file recovery, which, you know, the bad guys, after all, are wanting to sell, essentially, as one of their services. So don't be surprised if we don't see more of this. Uh, MSYS Soft appears to have a head start, but uh, there's probably uh, some additional revenue for reputable security firms to be making by saying, hey, we've got decryptors for these ransomware products. Give us the key. Uh, You can you know, trust the product because we're good guys and we want to help you get your files back faster. I saw some metrics that in some cases, the, the, the EMSYS soft decryptor was three or four times faster. And if you're talking about thousands of systems and you're worried about the integrity of them, first of all, you want the decryption not to fail. So you want the decryptor to work right. And apparently they don't always. Uh, Reux decryptor is known to have problems on large files. Uh, And you don't want it to take weeks to get back on the, you know, back online if you've got lots of servers. So, uh, you know, time is money. That's what happened to Colonial Pipeline, I remember. They, They paid the fine. Yep. Got the uh, was it R Evil? Got the uh, decryptor, yes. and it was uh, so it was it was Dark Side. Dark, dark side. side. That's right. It was so slow <laughs> that they ended yeah. up just restoring from the backups and saying, "Oh, screw it," you yeah. know, we'll just move on. How yeah. much does does this uh, do these guys charge though for their M? Just- That's a good question. I could not see any. Uh, and, and anything there, I would imagine it's something, but it's probably nothing like the ransom. Yeah, but so, you already paid the <laughs> you already paid the right. five million or fifty million to have well, to. It would be insult to injury to say, "Oh, and please, we need five thousand dollars for the Emsisoft decryptors." So, so <laughs> here's the here's the problem: Are you going to run the decryptor? from the bad guys. Yeah, you don't want to anyway, I'm sure. Right, without paying someone to look at it. Right. So if you're going to pay someone to look at it, why not instead just pay to run a a known safe decryptor? Exactly, yeah. So I I do think there is an aspect of of economics there that really does make sense. It's an interesting niche. (laughs) It is. It just makes you say, don't get it in the first place. Yeah, yeah. I know that's not always possible, obviously.